If you're making dietary changes or considering a prescription medication to lower your LDL cholesterol, then you might wanna watch this video until the bitter ends before you make that final decision. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. Let's look at a recent research article that shows that lowering your LDL cholesterol too low is actually dangerous and you should avoid it. Now there's actually several research papers that shows that your risk of dying actually increases the lower your LDL cholesterol is. And I'm gonna put links to all the research down in the show notes, but today we're gonna to pay particular attention to a recent study published in 2021 uh, in Nature's Scientific Reports. And it uses the NHANES data set, which is a very, very large population of people. It is an observational study, but it's not using things like food frequency questionnaires, and things like that. It's using a very hard endpoint in the research. The endpoint, death. That's kind of hard to fake, kind of hard to miss. If someone in the study dies, that's pretty much common knowledge to the researchers and also to the research subject themselves. Now, I want you and your doctor to read the complete study, but in this video, I'm gonna focus on just one figure, figure two out of this research article. Uh, and the first thing you need to know, and I'm going to go through a little bit of science here just so you understand what this chart is showing. So on the x-axis of this chart is LDL cholesterol from very, very low to very, very high. And on the y-axis of this chart is something called a hazard ratio. Now, if you're not a statistician or a research scientist, you may not know what a hazard ratio is, so I want to explain it to you very briefly. A hazard ratio is the hazard or the danger that an event will occur based on one of the other variables. And so in this chart, the hazard ratio is plotted against what your level of LDL cholesterol is. And so we might use this for a drug and say, oh, people who take this milligram strength of this drug have a higher hazard ratio than people who take a lower milligram strength of this drug. And so we get this hazard ratio is very useful in statistics, pharmacology, medicine, physiology. We use it all the time, but that's what it means. Now, another thing to know about hazard ratio is that a particular point on the hazard ratio scale, and that's the number one. So at number one, there's no increased hazard, but there's also no decreased hazard as well. It's kind of the baseline or the null set for this research data. So when you look at this chart, you see that the hazard ratio for LDL cholesterol hits the number one at about 130 uh, milligrams per deciliter. So that's very important. And now you'll see the dark red line, that's the actual calculated hazard ratio out of the all the data from the, how many people were in this? 19,034 people. So lots of people they had uh, over 1,600 deaths during the time period that they were studying. So this is a very large cohort and it, it went over a very long period of time. And there were a lot of instances of the endpoint, which was death, don't forget that. And so now we can plot these two things and we can say, okay, as your LDL cholesterol goes down or as it goes up, what happens to your risk of the endpoint, which is dying? And I think that's a very valid question. And I think it's a question that many people, including perhaps your doctor, isn't asking about the cholesterol lowering medication, some of which are lower your LDL cholesterol aggressively to super low, almost non-physiological levels. So let's look at some things on this chart. So now there's also two other lines on this chart in red and they're dotted lines or dashed lines. What this tells you is the confidence interval or what is the likelihood that the error goes in one direction or the other on this study. And so you can see right at the hazard ratio of one, the, the dashed red lines and the solid red line, they converge because there's not, there's not much risk there that there's been an error made. But as, you, as your LDL cholesterol increases, or as it decreases, you'll notice that those dashed red lines start to separate from the solid line. And the further you get from 130, the, the greater the magnitude of the confidence interval or the, 
the margin of error gets for this study. Now, the main reason that this study is so important is because doctors are continuing to try to lower your LDL cholesterol and now even more aggressively than they have in the past. The new American Diabetes Association guidelines just came out and they're recommending that your doctor, if you have diabetes, try to aggressively lower your LDL cholesterol to less than 70, okay? Now keep in mind the chart we're looking at here, let's go over here and let's look at an LDL of 70 and what that does to your hazard ratio. So right here is an LDL of 70, and you can see that the your risk of death, the hazard ratio actually starts to go up right about at that point. But they're saying that they want your, your LDL cholesterol less than 70. This is the American Diabetes Association, and they're getting this from the American Heart Association. So both of these large multi-million dollar uh, organizations want you to have an LDL cholesterol less than 70. So let's look at that. It looks like it, your risk of mortality, your risk of death goes up starting right about 70. What happens if you get it to 60? Now your hazard ratio is almost 1.5. What if it goes down to, to 50? Now, and so when you get your LDL cholesterol low enough, you actually are having a hazard ratio of two, which means you're doubling your risk of dying because of your low LDL cholesterol. Now, the data from this study, they adjusted this data. So you might say, well, I mean, this is people with diabetes. No, they adjusted for diabetes, for hypertension, for heart disease, for smoking, for obesity. They adjusted for all those things. So this is just what the LDL cholesterol is doing. And now if you go into your doctor's office and you get your lipid panel checked and your LDL cholesterol is 180, your doctor is literally going to crap their pants and be like, oh my God, this is so dangerous. But look at the hazard ratio at 180. It's still one, which means there's literally no risk of it. What if your, what if your LDL cholesterol is 240? Uh, it's it's 1.1 is the hazard ratio. It's barely off the curve, the, the line for 1.0. And if you look at the confidence interval, the two dashed lines, there, one of the lines dips below one. Now, what does that mean? If the, if the hazard ratio is less than one, that actually means that it's protective. And so even at, at 240, and my personal LDL cholesterol last time I checked was 250. And so we'll just use that as the, the mark point, point we're talking about here. So my, my risk as calculated by this study is barely greater than one. So maybe a little risk. But when you look at the confidence interval, it dips far below one. So it may actually be protective if, they're, if they've made an error somewhere in their calculations. But when we go back over here and we look at an LDL cholesterol of 70, look at the lower confidence interval. It, 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 it's above one. So it absolutely is increasing your risk of the endpoint, which is death, if your LDL cholesterol is less than 70. And you can see as you get to 60, that the lower part of the confidence interval keeps getting further and further above one, which means that this is absolutely a risk. And when you get down to LDL cholesterols of 50 or 40, there's no question. Your risk of dying from any cause goes up with an LDL cholesterol that low. And so now your question should probably become, well, why is my doctor so enthralled with the concept of getting my LDL cholesterol lower than 70? And I think that's a very valid question. And I, I think every one of you whose doctor will not shut up about getting your LDL cholesterol 70 or below, I think you need to print out a copy of this study. It's, there's a link in the show notes. And then print out a copy of this graph and, and take it to your doctor and say, now doc, my goal as a human is I don't care what my LDL cholesterol is, really. What I care about is not dying. So why are you recommending a therapeutic intervention that has been published 
that it increases the hazard ratio that I will die. And if I get it down as low as you want it to be, my risk is 50% is greater or even 100% greater than it would be if my LDL cholesterol were 180. And even if my LDL cholesterol were as high as Dr. Barry's LDL cholesterol, my hazard ratio would still barely be above one. And I, I think the problem is, is doctors just blindly believe the recommendations from the ADA and the AHA, and they don't do very much independent thinking for themselves. And so you giving your doctor a copy of this study and a copy of this chart will make your doctor do that. And some doctors have gotten a little lazy. They just follow the guidelines. They don't really try to think about things. And if you phrase this question respectfully, uh, doctor, are you trying to kill me prematurely? To which your doctor is going to say, oh my God, no, I've never do that. I'm trying to help you live a long, healthy life. And then you're going to show him this chart and say, but if you get my LDL cholesterol as low as you really want it to be, you're actually doubling my risk of dying. Did you realize that? Did you know that? And then hand him a copy of the study and say, I want, I'm going to go up front. I'm going to reschedule this, uh, this visit. And I'm going to give you a couple of weeks to read this study and read the other studies that Dr. Barry linked to down in the show notes of this video. And then I'm going to come back and you and I are going to have another discussion. And then if you still are adamant about trying to get my LDL cholesterol under 70, I'm going to find a new doctor because my goal as a human being is to live a long damn time and to live a long, healthy life. So according to this study and according to the, the data that was used to calculate uh, the, the uh, data that's in this chart, it's much, much healthier with regards to not dying to have an LDL cholesterol of 250 versus having an LDL cholesterol less than 70. So please think about it before you take any of the high dose statins like Lipitor, Zocor, Crestor, or definitely before you think about taking one of the aggressively LDL cholesterol lowering drugs like Proluent or Repatha. You're increasing your risk of all cause mortality. That means of dying for any reason by taking those drugs. So in addition, to the inconvenience of having to sit in the doctor's office and then stand in the pharmacy line and pay all the co-pays associated with that, you're also going to be at increased risk of dying. So rather than do that, I would try to live on the parts of this curve that are as close to a hazard ratio of one as possible, which is between 120 and 240. According to this chart, that is the sweet spot of LDL cholesterol where you have the least probability of dying. And you probably consider that a very important endpoint. I know I do. Hope this video helped. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.